good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this over session about networking. Uh, I belong to, to the over team, specifically in the Python part of the networking. So for Java related questions, uh, I will maybe have to defer. Um, the agenda for the day. Uh, we're going to go first with a little bit of introduction. Uh, how many of you were on the overt introduction session? OK, that's, that's less than half, so maybe I will stop there a little bit more. Uh, then we're going to go with features, just, just the networking ones. I'm not going to concentrate on the rest. Uh, we're going to see a little bit the, the architecture. Uh, also, like I'm going to give a general uh, view, but, but then I'm going to center on networking, obviously. Then configuration, how we do the stuff we do, and what you can actually configure, uh, the roadmap, and a bit of conclusion. And then uh, time for questions. Uh, if anybody wants to take a question during the presentation, you're, you're welcome to do so. Just raise your hand, and hopefully I will see you. So introduction. Uh, OVIRT is a virtual data center management uh, solution. Uh, the license is Apache uh, License 2, so compatible with GPL3. And uh, at the moment, uh, at least for the VDSM part of it, which is the, the Python manager, uh, we're tied to RHEL and, and Fedora, so also CentOS, but uh, we're not cross-distro yet. And the organization is in sub-projects that um, have a board, uh, similar style as Apache. And we have people there like from IBM and, and people just from community, et cetera. So architect, uh, feature, sorry. Uh, so we provide uh, graphical network management to ease the, the configuration of virtual machine networks those that are going to be used by the virtual machines, of course, and also for those that are not, the ones that are, for example, used for storage or for connecting to the display of the virtual machine through spies or something like that. Uh, those virtual uh, machine and not virtual machine net networks can be configured as required or as optional. This means if from some cluster you define that the hosts uh, must have a, a network. If something happens to the network on a specific host, that host will be deemed as non-operational. Uh, and the optional ones, it just, if you have it, cool. If not, so we, we just will not dwell on it and we'll just work with the rest. Uh, so to define those networks, you can define typical IP configuration once you assign it to some interface. and one of those things is the MTU that, that was recently added. Now we can make jumbo frames, like I think it's from 68 uh, of size to about 9,000. When we apply those configurations, we also allow for um, rollback. So if we apply the configuration and something goes wrong, uh, we are actively checking if the, the management can still see the, the computer, and if it cannot, so the, the computer, the, the host that we call it, uh, will just roll back all the configuration and, and go back on, online, if that is possible, which is in most cases, unless somebody's directly messing with it. Um, we allow, I don't know how many of you were in the OpenVSwitch uh, presentation. OK, we also have Thomas Graf here who gave the presentation. Uh, we allow similar features like uh, port mirroring. Uh, we don't use OpenVSwitch just as of yet. But uh, well, basically, it serves for taking one of those networks that I said that could be defined and say, OK, so this network will be mirrored to this virtual NIC. Uh, on this virtual machine, and this virtual machine is the, the one that typically the, the network manager would use for um, monitoring everything that's, that's going on there. Then we have uh, network linking, which is leveraging uh, a feature of, of Libbeard that, that allows you to, on, on a virtual machine that is running uh, and has a VNIC that is defined so, and, and, and running also, you can just 
change it to a different net network. Think of it as if you would actually go to the switch where the cable is plugged and the up, uh, uplink cable, you would move it to a different network. So, so that's, that's a simul. It also allows you to just unplug it and just remove it from all the network if you want to do that for any reason. Um, we have so also some uh, security features. In this case, it's the, the network filters. We just uh, get that from Libbeard. It's uh, anti-MAC spoofing and anti-ARP spoofing. And by default, it, it goes on the, on the VNX. And all of this, as, as it was explained in the over the presentation of introduction, can be extended by hooks. So most of the, of the commands of the API that we allow have some kind of hook that you can do before or after the action. So maybe you will adapt it to some special hardware that you have. On to architecture. Uh, what you can see here is the, the management uh, system. This is written in Java over JBoss, as you can see. Then there is the web admin. Uh, it's written on Qt, or GWT, as I call it normally. Um, then we have the over the VDSM part, which is the, the Python uh, virtual desktop and server management uh, component. And this is, is the part I actually work on, and it's what's dealing with the configuration of the networking on the host, but also with, with other kind of stuff. And uh, obviously for storage, you can rely on the OS storage, or you can rely on something like iSCSI, NFS, etc. But uh, all the actions start obviously on the UI. So let's go look at the UI. On network uh, level, what we provide is uh, a network tab. Uh, it was not added long ago, but it gives you an overview of all the networks that, that you are, have in the system defined. And it also, uh, in the sub tab, lets you see which virtual machines are using those networks, uh, which hosts are attached uh, to that network, etc. Then something that that is also very useful is when you are dealing with a specific host, let's say you just started that host and you want to get it up and running. So you go to the host uh, tab, it's, it's over there, you can see host. So you have also network interfaces here and you have this setup networks command that allows you to change all these assignations. We'll go over it afterwards. So the responsibilities for uh, the engine are uh, aggregate the, the information that, that is from the, from the user interface. Uh, it's important to say that the user interface, I forgot to mention before, uh, can also be uh, the, the command line client that we have or uh, Python and Java SDK, so, so you could drive it from that. So the engine takes that information, decides uh, which hosts those configurations belong to and send the request to the host's BDSM. BDSM, what does it do? It gathers network information, it checks if, if that is consistent with uh, what it receives, it, if the configuration is allowed, and if that is the case, it will apply the configuration. So, configuration then, since we're talking about this. Um, the basic configuration, it looks very, very similar to what you saw in the, in the Open B switch presentation, so basically, uh, we have a software bridge. In this case, it's uh, the, the traditional kernel bridge uh, that is plugged to a single NIC. There will be more options afterwards, more advanced configurations, but this is the basic case. And when you create virtual machines and add network interfaces on it, you have VNIX, and you can put as many as you want on a software bridge. So there is an identity here that we have. It's one logical network is uh, backed by one software bridge. If it were a non, uh, a non VM network, we would just drop the bridge and use a, a pass through through Libbeard uh, to define it. All right. So if we want to segregate uh, VLANs, so some VLAN, uh, some VMs we don't, or some VNICs we don't want to see each other or something like that, what we would just do is just set VLANs over any interface or bond or whatever. And on top of these VLANs, we can just configure the, the normal bridge. 
as I mentioned, there's bonds. So with the bonds, you, you can get something like failover or increased performance. And over that, you can also set up VLANs, like you can see here. And on top of that, go, go the regular bridges. So you can make any combination of them. Just uh, if you have to put several networks on, a, on top of a bond or an interface, you will always have to rely on, on VLAN tagging as per our rules. So how, how, do, how does this work? How, how the user can uh, do this configuration? So there is the, the setup networks button that I said before. It spawns this, this web interface. And it allows you to attach uh, networks to the devices and to bond. How, how does that look like? OK, so I can just take uh, this interface. Uh, if it were free, currently it's attached to a network. I could uh, potentially move it over to a bond, and it would just add it to the bond. But if you have two that are not assigned, actually what it displays is uh, this menu that uh, allows you to choose a name for the bond and also to set the typical bonding options that, that the kernel allows. Um, so you just separate them by spaces, and, and, and there's that. So what, what do we do with the network? So as, as you can see here, we have the required and non-required networks. So with the required networks, you just drag them here. If you want to remove them, you drag them out. Uh, and when you want to remove them, so you just do that. As soon as you attach more than one network, uh, it will, when you want to apply, it will tell you if, if they are not VLAN, if it's something wrong. So it, it will show you a nice message. And there is one final point from here that you should take, that is the safe network configuration. Unless you tick that, uh, the configuration will only be during the life of that uh, uh, run of the, of the host. So if you restart the host, we roll back the configuration if you didn't make it per permanent. OK, so uh, the other thing is uh, to set up some IP configuration. When you assign a network to an interface, you can set all the things you see here. This is the, the special overt management network. Uh, this is the one that uh, the engine is, is using to talk to the BDSM component. And uh, it has a specific field that, that is the, the gateway that will be used by all communications in the host. Uh, you can set up DHCP static, and for the DHCP, you can even uh, start it and not wait for the DHCP to return. Uh, you can just tell it, just start the interfaces and, and return fast so I can continue doing stuff. There's also the synchronization of networks, which is uh, quite a new feature that what it allows is that if there is some discrepancy between what's on the engine and what the host uh, knows about a network, uh, a VLAN and an MTU, it will uh, notify and take action. So you can tell it if you want it to be synchronized or if you just don't care about that network too much. So how do, apply, how do we apply that configuration um, based on our architecture? So basically, I'm going to con concentrate on the communication between the engine and, the, and BDSM. So let's look at that closer. The communication between both it's, are, is currently done in XML RPC, even though we are working on moving it to JSON RPC. So both will be available, but probably XML RPC will be deprecated. And a configuration, typical configuration, looks like this. So you can see here that we have a dictionary of networks. All the networks that are configured are here. Then we have a dictionary of uh, bonds. So each bond that you specify uh, will go here. So this bond is referencing this, and it, it has uh, a VLAN tag. It doesn't have a spanning tree protocol. And uh, it's breached because it's a, a VM network. Then there is this part that I was talking about, the, the rollback. If you would set it not to uh, do the connectivity check, so it would not automatically uh, roll back. And if you have more networks, so it looks like this. For example, here we have two bridge networks that are just set simply uh, above a network interface and uh, no bond whatsoever. The, the other is the same. And if everything goes right, so the uh, VDSM will return something like this. 
message done, code zero. We support uh, some different kinds of uh, return codes that the engine can interpret and take uh, different actions, normally different kinds of error messages. And on top of that, we can provide a special error message very specific to the, to the exception or error that happened. And that allows us to, to give a little bit more information to the user. So how does VDSM process this XML RPC request? So let's, let's get deep. Uh, let's go on the, onto the Python modules. So the requests, uh, these are the API uh, basic commands that, that we provide. Uh, there were also add networks, remove networks, and uh, edit, connect, uh, edit networks, sorry. Uh, but those are kind of deprecated. You can still use them. I use them a lot. But the, the way forward is to go with setup networks. So each of these. Uh, are binded here in XML RPC module, uh, which instantiates uh, an API uh, instance, and, and then API will decide if it's something that affects only the host, so it will take the route of going through super BDSM, which has uh, privileges, so it can uh, set a, a port mirroring using TC, or it can uh, if up, if down if down interfaces, et cetera, or if it's something more related to the, to the VM that will be managed by Libbeard. So it's, it's normally done through, through this path. As you can see, there is some communication here. For, for example, when you update a device and decide, OK, this device now will become uh, a mirror target, so, so it will receive the communication. So it will need some change on VM level, and also it will need some change here. So that is the communication. But the most important modules, and what I'm really touching all day long, it's this. Config network, netinfo, and, and TC. Let's look at it closer, what they use and, and how we do what we do. So config network. Uh, it writes configuration files, typical IFC, FG files that everybody has, has done by hand. And uh, it allows you to do if up, if down. We have all that a little bit like wrapped around to, to make it easier. Then it uses libvirt to uh, each network that we define, be it a VM or non-VM, uh, it will be uh, defined in, in libvirt. So, so that, is, that is one of the use cases. And the other use case is just to add some VM uh, network, et cetera some VNIC to a VM network, sorry. Uh, and finally, CSFS that I will, I will go afterwards, what we use. So I said that we check if the configuration that we receive is consistent with what's on the host. So to do that, we use netinfo. Netinfo is a class that, that is leveraging uh, Python F2, libvirt, CSFS, procfs, and, all, and with all of that, it creates an instance that is effectively a snapshot of the current state of the networking on, on that machine. Uh, so before we prepare an action, we will check uh, the, the snapshot. Afterwards, we'll check it again. Most likely, everything went right. We can move forward. And finally, there's TC, which it's, its only purpose is to deal with traffic control. But we're not providing QO, QoS as of yet. so. What it does mainly now is just use IP root and Python as tool to do the, the port mirroring thing. So let's look a bit closer for what do we use each thing. So in its scripts, uh, our flow with it is just to back up the AFC FG files of the devices that we are about to modify. Then we uh, take them down, write the new uh, the new version that is consistent with the configuration we received. And then we just if up if everything goes right. So perfect. If not, we'll roll back with what we backed up. Uh, CSF, uh, CSFS. OK, so for all the devices, the most basic uh, functionality we need CSFS for is to list the devices of each kind that there, that there are. So bonds, VLANs, NICs, uh, and bridges. but on top of that, we also need to know things like the MAC address, the upper state, the speed, 
uh, the slaves that are on a bond, uh, the ports that are on a bridge, things like that. Procafes. So uh, for, from this, we get the roots that are currently defined. We don't do as much with the roots as, as we could. So for example, now the gateway uh, is not checked much. It's only checked that, that it's a valid uh, IP address format. But it would potentially be beneficial if we would check if we have a root to that IP uh, to be more, more accurate and, and detect errors and prevent people from shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, we also allow, I, I mean, use uh, ProcFS to, to check which is the correspondence between VLANs and, and devices. And uh, also we check because when you add some interface to the bond, it, it, it might change uh, its MAC address. And it's important in some cases to know which was the original MAC address. So for those reasons, we also use ProcFS. Uh, Python F tool. We use that not only on VDSM, but also in the gas station. So in virtual machines, we, we get the IP addresses uh, as well as, as we do here. Uh, also, the device list is a way to, to get them in certain cases. And finally, set and, and get flags. We use that to set the promiscuity mode for the, for the port mirroring thing. Uh, IP root is just currently uh, TC. We only use the traffic control from it. Uh, and from libvirt, we define the networks. Uh, we change the correspondence between vnic and network. Uh, we hot plug and hot unplug uh, NICs. I don't know, everybody is aware of the hot plugging thing? Yeah, I guess it's, it's fair to assume. So it's just like creating a, a VNIC on, on a VM that is already running. Uh, change a VNIC that is already there, as I explained before, like you can take the link down or something like that. And then the, the filters that I talked about before. So roadmap, what, what are we looking for? Uh, onwards. So what we're looking onward is twofold. There's the engine side uh, and the VDSM side. I mean, of course, these features both need a little bit of work on 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 every on every side, but uh, they mostly belong to one of the places. So we are trying to add, and we have some prototype running of network defi um, programmatically defined uh, networks via providers. So at the moment, the one that we're working, uh, working with is Quantum. Uh, and you can just go to the Quantum page, uh, set up uh, some network, define it, and it will automatically show up in the overt management uh, page. Then we have to further uh, develop uh, the the permissions for network. So maybe I, will, I want to let some user do some actions on, on network, but only some. I don't want to, to let everything. So from the user portal, maybe something will, will be possible to do. Uh, IP allocation ranges and IPv6, because as you saw before in, in, in all those uh, slides that we were setting IPs and, and so on, we did not really. Uh, have support yet, or we still do not, in fact, uh, for inputting an, an IPv6. And, and that is something that, that's due to change. And we are receiving some patches already in that way. For the BDSM part, OK, so uh, one thing is network migrations. It already hit the, the upstream uh, repository, which I will link to afterwards. Uh, basically, migrate uh, network between hosts. Uh, then we have uh, a new feature that is currently on draft state, and, and it's really the way forward, not just because I'm in charge of it, of course, uh, that is uh, for all the network entities like NICs, bonds, VLANs, uh, bridges, or everything that, that might occur in the future, to have uh, an object-oriented rep uh, representation that will allow us to have the flexibility to define other entities as, as it is needed, and uh, also to, to have a configurator backing. What, the, what, what are configurators? OK, configurator is currently, as you saw, we're just using init scripts. We just write the IFCFC file, and we take it down, take it up, roll back, whatever. 
So, and that we do for, for everything. So the, the way forward that we see is that each of the entities of those representations will be able to have a, a, config, a specific configurator. For example, let's say the bridges will be possible to be configured with the IP route to IP2, for example, or via netlink using libpanel, or you can just define it in OpenVSwitch, and then you can you get all those features of OpenVSwitch for free, for example, or almost for free. You only have to write the configurator. Uh, another case, very very new, is maybe the bonds we want to use uh, TeamD, which which is uh, another kind of bond that is partly also an user space in and it's less buggy, let's say, because the, the traditional bonding has these, these issues everybody knows about. Uh, or if you don't know about, just in some rare cases, you can do some damage to the kernel with, with the bonding. Uh, so it's important, keep the, the kernel updated. Uh, and in the beginning, this configurator thing, like you will have mostly a set thing, because we're not changing the API of set networks. But uh, so you, you, it will be predefined what will be used for each thing. But in the future, we uh, are looking into allowing the, the user from the management interface to say, OK, I want this particular thing to be backed uh, by this configurator. The final roadmap features, uh, and almost the end of, of this presentation, is the live network information. The live network information is currently we're just taking snapshots like Matt, so you can imagine that if you need, you would need to do a, a lot of operations in, in some use case in a network. Let's say something that I did right. Uh, add 300 networks, uh, logical networks via uh, the old add network command. The old add network command didn't define all the networks at once, like setup commands, but sent one request per, per each command. So what, what happened with that is that before each action, especially if it had bonds even more, uh, it was uh, getting a snapshot, doing some modification, getting a snapshot, and so on. So you can imagine that reading all the state of the network uh, is a little bit troublesome. Uh, it, it really took a long time. I think the, the last time I clocked it uh, was, was taking more than 10 minutes, uh, quite more. Let's say, and uh, with live network information, what we would do is, we would take a snapshot, the initial one, we'd probably keep it as it is, just using the, the same stuff that we do, but then we would uh, use libpanel uh, to register to netlink uh, events like link creation, uh, address, addition, stuff like that, and uh, we it would automatically up update the information, so we don't need to spend all the time in rereading everything. And uh, that obviously will help us scale. And another thing that it might favor in the future, this is still not even drafted, but uh, a live network information or the ab ability to register to events uh, might help us define some actions for some events. Like for example, let's say the bridge goes down. Somebody goes to the SSH to the host, takes the bridge down. So we might register to that event and uh, remove that network from, from LiveBeard and, and somehow tell the engine, hey, something, something is going on here. Maybe this host should be taken as non-operational. So conclusion. I hope that, that it showed somehow, even though I didn't show too much of the, of the UI, that uh, what it allows is to make the, the network management easy. Uh, because you, you really can just drag and drop the stuff and it, it manages all the complexity for you. Uh, that we're not using anything special uh, or arcane, we're just using the, the typical OS tools plus libvirt. And that we are working on adding more features uh, all the time and adding other technologies and pieces of the stack to empower the users to achieve more. So. All that is remaining to say is just try it, get Overt, uh, download it. it. You can go to overt.org. And uh, if there is some issue or you want to propose something or even hack on it, like garrit.overt.org, uh, 
and also on the chat. I'm always on the chat. If you see up women, uh, up women though, and you want to ask some question, this is not working or something, just just go there and, and ask. And also you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, thanks a lot. And if somebody has some question, I would very welcome them. Um, I have a question. Sure. Are you planning to move forward using network providers or the configurator? What, what's, what's your long-term plan? So the, the long-term plan, I would say, is uh, currently, in, in terms of that, is to allow for, for both. Uh, currently, obviously, the, 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 the manual configurator using the, the UI is the preferred way because it's the, the tried and true. But uh, it, is, it, it looks to us like more and more people want to maybe use quantum and, and other elements to, to deal with that. So we are working a lot in improving that, and I can imagine a future where, like for example, the previous presentation that, that was how to use uh, OBIRT on some other stuff like EC2 and stuff. So, so, so to define it in that way and just use providers most of the time. Okay, how will you deal with if you have um, conflicting feature sets? Like for example, quantum plugin doesn't support something that native configurator just all right, so in that case, uh, it is still very much on, on the early stages, but what I would say is we're probably going to allow people to go to the, to the interface as, as they do now to, to add the stuff. But obviously, the, the best way to go would be to work with the, with the network providers to allow to, to let's say, make them include those features, or we work on including those features that they don't have. Currently, when we don't support any something that they don't do, so we just ignore that part. But, but it is obvious that we have to work with, with these communities, and, and we are in contact with Quantum, for example. Yeah, sure. Uh, I have a question. How many, how many virtual, uh, virtual networks you can support with all your there is a limit, you can well, infinite. Okay, so, so the question is, uh, I repeat for, for the recording, I forgot to do that before, is how many networks you can support uh, on an OBIRT installation. So, so the thing is, uh, it, it really depends. Uh, it's limited first by the host. If we, you're asking how many in a host, it's a, it's a different question because of course, like you can have several hosts so that, that exposes uh, Explode the, the amount of networks. I don't think there is a hard limit for, for networks that are defined logical networks, but on a host, of course, you're, you're limited by the amount of interfaces, uh, by the, I think it's 2048 or something like that, VLANs that you can do, because for, for any single NIC or bond, we only allow like to put VLANs to, to put several networks in it. Uh, I think it, it would be a, a funny experiment. In fact, uh, I'm playing all the time, like when I'm testing, I'm using nested virtualization. So because sometimes I want to try, hey, what happens with uh, 10 NICs? So I don't have a computer with 10 NICs. Uh, so I have nested virtualization and I try that. But, and, and I think it, it would be interesting to see how that, uh, how that works. I mean, how much can we really support? Yes. So are there any plans to offer the quantum Okay, so you mean, uh, well, the, the question is to offer the, the quantum API uh, to define uh, the networks in over. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, um, I would say that the integration goes more in the direction of having quantum running, defining the stuff there, and then subscribing to that. Uh, and I don't think that there are any plans for, for doing that directly, like re-implementing quantum. It's, it's not really on our scope. Uh, any other question? I, I, I have a question. Sure. Do, do, you sort of have to have some uh, host and support for the given OS as you modify the EF config file, right? Yeah. Do you, what broad kind of uh, OS do you support? Right. So the OS is basically, uh, as, as I showed uh, in the beginning, just, uh, sorry, the question was uh, how many, or which OS do we support? So basically, RHEL, 
CentOS and well, all L clones, but I think CentOS is the one that is used most, mostly by the community. And uh, Fedora. Once we will uh, have uh, this configurator thing that I'm talking about, uh, then we're just, th the first configurator that comes to my mind, apart from the one that is using IFCFG, just will be a refactoring of the current code, uh, will be using IP root 2. And for this reason, it will support any uh, reasonably modern Linux distribution. So, for example, I'm testing at home with, with Arc some, when I'm prototyping, and, and hopefully that, that will be the case, that all, all of them will be supported. A lot of people are asking Ubuntu and stuff like that. Uh, sure. What is the current limit of the amount of hosts per virtual network? Hosts per virtual net network. Uh, I don't think there's a limit for that. I mean, when, once you define uh, a logical network for a, for a cluster, you can apply it to all the hosts of, of that I'm cluster. I'm thinking the R for MAC address spacing so that, uh, I mean, when using uh, network devices, I mean, non-virtual ones, there's always a limit of how many thousands of MAC addresses for R. Uh, yeah. spaces you can have or how many IP routes you can have. That's why I'm wondering what's the limitation that the Okay, um, so the question is uh, if there is some limitation or which kind of limitation do we set for networks uh, that are defined like on a cluster? Uh, the, the answer is I guess that there must be some rule in the, in the engine. I don't really look at the engine code very much but this kind of, of, of rules reside there and if it's not there like of course we have the physical limit as, as, as you said uh, but it, it's a good question and I'm, I'm gonna ask uh, to the engine guys and I can refer to it maybe maybe he knows Yeah, yeah af afterwards, uh, I, I can give you the contact of somebody who certainly will know where uh, th that rule is set or if it's set at all. Uh, I think there was a question further back. You just said that you're using uh, Ah, yes, uh, nested virtualization, yeah, nested KVM. And how it works? Well, basically, you cannot do it in RHEL derivative. Uh, you can do some tricks. Uh, for example, I set it up the other day for, for my colleague here. Uh, basically, anything or newer than a 3.0 kernel, I think. I think it's even earlier, but I, I don't recall, but I know for sure that 3. something onwards will support it. Uh, the Intel KVM module has an option called nested. If you set that to yes, uh, you will be able to create a virtual machine, and that virtual machine on top, uh, inside it, you, you will be able to run other virtual machines on top. So my typical use case is, uh, I have a build manager uh, installation. I have several, uh, that, that is on a machine that has the nested, then on it I, I create virtual machines that have uh, the amount of NICs that I want to test with. Uh, and those machines, the are virtual machines, I set up as uh, hosts uh, for the over manager, and, and those can run other uh, virtual machines on top, and I can test it if that is all working well. There's a caveat there. Uh, you have to be careful with uh, with the nested virtualization because even though it works, it might behave finally in some cases like. If I remember properly, there was an issue with 
hot plugging. I'm not sure if it's still the case, but I ran into some issue with hot plugging to the second level of, of virtual machines, to, the, to hot plugging uh, BDX. So just to have that in mind if you want to try. But it's really, really useful to do this kind of, of setup for testing. And we're out of time. Uh, if you have some other question, I will be outside for like 20, 30 minutes and you can, you can ask. Thanks a lot.